Okay, YouTube, back again. Um, here's what we got going on. We got snow. It was raining for a minute. Starting to snow pretty damn hard. So that's the long ass driveway that I got to bring all my steel in. They just park horizontal in front of the house, and I've got to wheel all that stuff back in here. So. If you look at my other videos, you'll know that that's kind of part of why I had the casters on this table. So tomorrow when they bring me a whole bunch of steel, I can not have to carry it that whole way. So anyways, here we go. It's done. Um, outside of, I think I might end up putting the gussets on here. At least this, this section here. Um, I'm still up in the air about it. And the reason I say that is because if I hit this right here, there is some some flexing right in this area here. Um, I think if I just put a gusset from right here to this section of the right here close to the tube and maybe maybe surround it a little bit. I don't want to cover this up because this is the the fill up area for the the hydraulic fluid. So I think if I do that it'll strengthen it up. But then another thing I was kind of thinking about too is because I plan on putting those those springs on here. So what I could possibly do is take some angle iron that I've got coming in tomorrow and take it along this seam right here. And then some point right in this area where it's you know extra strong raise it up for the bracket for the, the return spring. Um, I'm positive that would strengthen it up and get rid of that little bit of a flex on there. However, I'll say this. When I'm bending tubing, there's not going to be any, any of this up and down flex here. Okay? It's, what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to rip this across here. It's going to be stretching that metal or trying to. So, we're trying to rip this mount off. As you can see, also you can see I cleaned up all these welds except for, except for these ones. I didn't, I didn't feel any need to bother with those. Plus it would have been a royal pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? You know, leave me, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. But, uh, one thing about this jack, if you read the instructions, which most of us don't, um, it'll tell you in the instructions that you're more than likely going to have to put some more hydraulic fluid in this jack because they do ship it with some, but they don't put enough in there. And even though it was working, when I got it, it's not enough to, it's not enough for you to, to actually use it properly. I had to put quite a bit in there. I would have probably said that the fluid was right about here and it needs to be all the way up to this sight hole right here. So I, I put a decent amount of, of fluid in there. So the other thing too is if you, you build one of these, this pump has to be down, okay? And the reason why that is is these are not designed to lay down flat, Okay, these are designed to be used for a, a shop crane, an engine crane, cherry picker, whatever you want to call that. And they're, they're meant to sit at that angle that a, that a cherry picker would, which is pretty much vertical. I mean, it's maybe about 30 degrees off from being vertical <clears throat> at best. And because we're laying it flat, the hydraulic fluid needs to get inside of this, this pump area here. So this needs to be facing down. Don't think that you can put it up for whatever reason. Just remember your jack handle needs to be able to put a jack in there so you can go back and forth with it and that pump needs to be down. Do not mount it where the pivot points where the bolts end out coming in through the side because that defeats the purpose. All you're going to do is cause binding. This thing is going to pivot in this direction. It's not going to pivot up and down. Okay. And it's not even going to really move that much left or right, but it will. But let me know what you guys think, man. I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, I can't wait to start bending up some tube and see see how it works. I'm going to. I'm, I'm really concerned about this compressor not being enough to to deal with this. 
But there's only one way to find out. And if it's not, it won't take me long at all before I go out and buy myself either a, another compressor or, or a bigger tank. What I might end up doing, Harbor Freight has a, has a 20 gallon compressor that their compressor, let me see, it's not as powerful, the pump is not as powerful as this one, but it's got a bigger capacity. And if I daisy chain these two together, then it'll be more than enough to power this. In all honesty, I'd be more than enough to power anything I want to if I did that. Um, my only concern with that is that there's different, the output of the motors is different. So what I might end up doing is just try to find me a used compressor off of Craigslist and see if I can find me a 20 gallon tank compressor that's maybe 100 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that, where I can just take all the guts off of it and just plumb this into it. So where it's not a permanent thing where I could just attach the hose to it and it just gives me more capacity to work with. Um, obviously the bigger the tank the better. This thing fills up this little four and a, roughly four and a half gallon tanks. It fills it up fast. Um, from empty it'll fill it up in, in, in 60 seconds. So um, I think it'll do well with a, a 20 gallon tank but we'll see. I'm going to try it without it and, and see how it goes because eventually what I plan on doing is getting me a proper shop compressor in here. And the only reason I didn't, because I could have got one for a little bit more than I paid for that. Um, the power that I have coming into this shop is not very, it's not very high. I've already got one 220 volt hooked up that I'm using for my plasma cutter and my welder. And I don't have enough to, to run another dedicated 220. Um, maybe eventually down the road, I've talked about this before in my other videos, I'm considering possibly buying the property, but it's really gonna be up to the owner of the property if they'll, if they'll work with me on that. Um, we'll see. I mean, there's always the option of just using this compressor whenever I need it, and then just plugging in the big compressor when I need that. Um, because it's only a one-man show inside of here. I'm not too, too concerned with needing the 220 for multiple things. It just sucks to have to unplug unplug this, to plug in that, and you know, and, and vice versa. It's just, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, but anyways, I'll do a follow-up video here, probably, probably next week with some actual bend testing. And I've got to make what's called template bends. And, and basically I'm going to be doing some 90 degree bends. I'm going to be doing some 45 degree bends and, and a couple of 180 degree bends. And, and what I'm doing, what I'll be doing with that is just basically finding out, it, it's, it's allowing me to have a gauge. So I'm going to measure the tubing and mark the tubing every inch increment so that I can know when I'm designing roll cages and things like that that I know exactly how many inches are being taken up in a bend, you know, so that, so that I can measure my material property properly and make sure I'm putting my bends where they're supposed to be. Because it would suck if I was doing a hoop, you know, a main hoop in a roll cage just to find out that, you know, I'm a half inch or an inch, my bend was a half inch or, or an inch too far away and now I can't get the hoop in the car and I'm going to have to cut it and piece it together that that would suck so that's what those template bends are going to be for and it's just kind of a gauge thing it'll also allow me to find out clearance issues and things like that when it comes to putting the the roll cages in the car so i can kind of get an idea of where i want things positioned so it'll just be a bunch of a bunch of different angled bends so <clears throat> i'm actually going to be using some it's point oh 8.3 wall tubing for that and the reason being is that why am I going to waste you know $75 on some DOM just so I can you know just have some gauges essentially it's not even load bearing so I'm going to use a thinner wall these benders say that they're they're rated to do they're not rated to do anything thinner than the point oh eight three. so that's what I'm going to use just to, just for those template bins. But I am going to order in some. I got a quote on some DOM. It, you know, this die is a one inch seven, 
one and three quarter inch die. So the quote that I got was for, I believe, $75. $70 or $75 through a company, local company called Klein Steel Direct. Um, they're also in Rochester. And so they're, they're my steel supplier, and, and I'll be ordering that here by the end of the week. Whenever I finish up the, the project I got coming in tomorrow, I'll get paid, and I'll be able to order the, the steel that I need for the, the roll cage. Um, stay tuned also. I'm going to be building a, a steel rack along this wall with some of the material I'm going to have left over from this next project. So that's also going to be a build video if you guys are interested in seeing that. Um, I'm actually, what time is it? It's midnight. I'm going to call it a wrap tonight so I can get up at a decent time because they're coming at 9 o'clock in the morning. But I'm actually going to finish up the gussets on this table and, and use my my hole punch, my hydraulic hole punch to, to clean up those holes and to actually make the four other gussets. So that video is going to be coming in the next next few days, so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, that's about it for now. Um, subscribe, comment, like. Seriously, leave me a message, comment on there, whatever. Let me know what you think of this. Tell me if you think I did a good job or if it's garbage or, you know, be honest with me. I, I like it, and, and I know you guys are probably just as curious of, as I am about how well it works. Um, so, and I will be showing you guys that soon enough. One thing I will say that I, that I had to do that I don't like that I had to do is kind of a pain in the ass. When I plasma cut this hole, I wish I had some drill bits big enough to, to drop this in here, number one. I wouldn't have had no issues at all. It would have been clean. Same thing with this hole here. Um, <clears throat> but I plasma cut the hole and there was no way for me to get the plasma cutter in here to cut the bottom plate. So that was a royal pain in the ass. What I ended up having to do is turn the torch upside down and cut from the bottom up. And it was a big mess. It was completely off. So what I did is I had took my other washer here, dropped the bolt in, lined up the washer, and... I don't know if you can see that, but I welded the washer down on the bottom. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted a clean hole for this for this bolt to drop through. Um, I'm not going to bolt this. There's no reason for it. And the same thing with this front one. I'm not going to bolt it. There's no reason for it. I do have the nuts for it, but again, there's there's no there's no real reason to, to do that. Um, everything works great the way it is, and and. If I need to pull this apart, I don't need to get any wrenches. Just pop them out of there real quick, and it's done deal. So, again, there'll, there'll be more videos for this because when I when I finally get around to putting the springs on it, I'm, I'll post some more more videos of that, and we'll have the tubing the tubing built or the tubing bending test on here, and we'll put this thing to the test. So, subscribe, comment, like. Click the link in the description. I'm going to have links to all of these parts. Um, for those curious, I put this together with my Everlast iMig 200 and my Everlast Power Plasma 50. Um, California Air Tools compressor, silent compressor, 4.6 gallons, and my portal cable chop saw over there. Um, and last but not least, my piece of shit skill angle grinder that's got to get replaced here, here real soon um yeah talk to you guys later